Hi everyone, my name is Ashna Patel. I'm a customer success technical architect here at MuleSoft. In today's video, we are going to take a look at how to create a GitHub Actions workflow to deploy a Mule application to CloudHub. Let's get started. For this demonstration, we have a very simple Mule application. This application calls a third-party API, retrieves a random quote, and returns it back to the requester. Now let's have a look at the POM file for this application. We are using the Mule Maven plugin to deploy application to CloudTurb. You can see the CloudTurb deployment configuration has been specified here. This is where you'll specify the CloudTurb control plane URL, your application runtime, and the username password to deploy application with. You'll also specify the application name here, which has to be unique for CloudTurb deployment. If not, this could cause issues with your deployment pipeline. You'll also specify the environment you want to deploy to and the worker parameters to, conf to be configured for your application. If there are any runtime properties that you would like to specify for your application, they can be specified here. This can be secrets, which can then be loaded to GitHub Action Secrets or any other third-party secrets manager that can be integrated with GitHub Actions. Don't forget to specify your dependency repositories under here. If you're using Exchange to download any dependencies, specify that under Repositories. Under Plugin Repositories, make sure to specify Mule Enterprise Repo. This is where the Mule runtime will be downloaded from for your GitHub Action Runner. We've now uploaded the Mule application to GitHub. I've uploaded all the files in the Mule project folders as they are to GitHub. Now let's look at the Actions page where we we'll create the GitHub Actions workflow. This is the Getting Started page for GitHub Actions. And you can see there are a few templates for you to start the workflow from, or you could set up the workflow yourself. Let's start with a blank one. This is the YAML configuration for your workflow. On the right hand side, you can see there is a marketplace tab. This is where you can search for actions that are developed by GitHub actions or by other users, and you can then use them in your workflow. You can also look at the documentation to get started with the workflow and understand the syntax and how to add more steps and jobs. At the top of this workflow, there is a name for the workflow. This is what will appear in the Actions tab in case of there are multiple workflows. This is where the workflow triggers are defined. For example, this workflow will get triggered every time there is a push or pull request on the main branch. If you would like to have a trigger to manually run the workflow from the Actions tab, you can specify that by using the Workflow Dispatch. Under Jobs is where you'll specify the actions and steps to be run as part of the workflow. There is a pre-built job here. Now let's add some steps to build the Mule application here. I've added some steps to the build job. This snippet is available in the GitHub project and I've added a link to the source code in the description below. Let's have a look at the steps one by one. The first step is the checkout action. This action allows the workflow to have access to the source code. This section is already available in the marketplace. So if you come to the marketplace and search for checkout, you'll see all the available actions here. I'm using the one that's provided by GitHub Actions. You can also look at the syntax and the documentation for this section for various configuration options. You also want to specify the version you want to use for this section. This makes sure that you're using a stable build rather than the latest release. Next one is cache. I'm using cache to um, cache the Maven dependencies from my build so that the next time I run this build, hopefully it will be a little bit faster. Next up, we'll set up the JDK. I'm using setup Java action and I've configured it to use JDK 1.8. Next up, we'll set up the server credentials for the Maven settings. Now, traditionally you'll add it to settings.xml, but for actions, you'll add it as part of the YAML file. Um, I'm using the Mule Enterprise server credentials for um, the Nexus, Nexus repo credentials. You can also specify the Exchange credentials if you want to download any dependencies from Exchange. This can be configured in the Settings Secrets page where you'll store your credentials and then download in your GitHub Actions. 
Next up, we have Maven Effective Settings. Now that's an optional step, but I highly recommend it in case you're having any issues with configuring the server credentials or making sure that the right JDK version is being loaded, etc. Next up, we'll run the Maven build command and package the application, and then we'll stamp the artifact before we upload it. This is important to understand which commit is being deployed to CloudHub. Um, the commit hash will be available in the jar file, so you can also see it in CloudHub and verify which commit is being deployed. Um, this is an action. This is a simple command that is being run on the Linux server. So first we get the artifact name, which is the jar file name. We calculate the commit hash, the short version of it, and then we'll create an artifact name too, which is the jar file name plus the commit hash. And then we simply rename the jar file with the updated name. Finally, we'll upload the artifact to GitHub Action Storage. You can specify a different path if you don't want to store it under target. Now let's save this file. I'm going to call it build on push. And for this demo, we'll commit it directly to the main branch. Once you save this, all your workflows are going to live under your project source code under .github workflows folder. Now, because we committed directly to the main branch, the workflow is already triggered. And the build job has started. OK, so now the build job has finished. And we can go in and have a look at the logs for the build job. You can see all the steps that we added to the build job um, have their different logs here. We can go in the individual step and check out the logs. So this is setup JDK. If you go down to build with Maven, the Maven build has run. If I scroll down to the bottom, the build is successful. And I can also see the M unit run. The build log that is displayed here is limited. Um, it can get truncated sometimes if it's too long. You can also see the artifact that was created as part of the build job, and it has been stored in the GitHub Actions. Um, this is by default retained for 90 days. You can update it in settings. We are back in the YAML file, and as you can see, I've added the deploy job and some steps. You can see that the deploy job depends on the build job to run. If build fails, then the deploy job won't start. The first step is check out again to give access to the source code, and then the cache step to save time on the Maven dependency download. Finally, we'll download the artifact or the package jar file that we uploaded earlier as part of the build job. And then finally, we'll run the Maven deploy command this is the command to deploy the application to CloudHub. I'm only deploying it to Sandbox. That's why it says the deploy to Sandbox. Now, the parameters specified as part of this Maven deploy command correspond to the configuration we did in the project's POM file um, under CloudHub deployment. You can see any point username, any point password, the environment I'm going to deploy to, and the decryption key. Decryption key is the runtime property that I'm going to pass with my application. Now, in order to load these dynamic properties, I'm going to use the environment variable. And these environment variables are then loaded from the GitHub secrets, which you can configure under settings for your repository. Uh, there are two different types of secrets, repository secret and organization secret. For this one, I, I'm choosing repository. A couple of things to remember about secrets is you can't use dot or full stop in your secret key or name. Um, same for environment variable. Um, you can use underscore. And there are a few reserved words as well that you can't use as part of secrets. For example, token, T-O-K-E-N. Uh, that's one word that I found that gave me a lot of grief. So if you are using token as part of a secret name, maybe abbreviate it to TKN instead. Now let's save this file. I'm going to name it build and deploy on push. Again, we are going to come in straight to the main branch. 
the file is saved. Now let's go to the Actions tab. Because we committed straight to the main branch, it has triggered the workflow again. This time, there is two jobs, Build and Deploy. Okay, so the both Build and Deploy jobs have finished successfully. Let's look at the Deploy logs. You can see the different steps again. Let's look at the Deploy to Sandbox. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the application has been deployed successfully to CloudHub. Now let's go to the AnyPoint platform and verify the deployment. I'm logged in my AnyPoint platform. Now let's go to Runtime Manager and verify if the application has deployed correctly. Okay, so we can see the application name and the status is started. Let's verify the logs. As you can see, the application has started successfully. And that's it. The last thing I want to draw your attention to is the jar file name for the application deployed to CloudTurb. You might recall in the build job, we added a step to add the commit hash as part of the jar file name. So now that the application has been deployed to CloudTurb, that jar file name contains the commit hash that was deployed. This is good to know to trace back which exact source code commit has been deployed to CloudHub. The GitHub Action workflow that we created today is available with the full source code at the GitHub repo mentioned here. You could have a look at the documentation website to find out more about the Mule Maven plugin. And if you would like to learn more about automating the building, unit testing, and deployment of Mule application using Maven-based tooling, you could have a look at the training course, Production Ready Development Practices. Thanks again for watching this Friends of Max demonstration. I look forward to seeing you again soon.